There's two on me. Oh, I'm in the gulag. Right. What? It's time. Oh, welcome back to my cooking life hack show where I test to find out are these life hacks real or are they fake? There's only one way to find out, and that's by taste. Come on. Welcome to Prison Talk, where we're going to be cooking exactly what they cook in prison, according to Soldier Boy. Weird, right? Let's watch the clip. All right, I told myself I won't do this, but here we go. When I was locked up, this is what I was eating. Take this, take this. Get some good snacks in jail. Yeah, so good to eat. Sure. in the bag. Yes, yeah, so Tuna, sausage, and some little beef jerky, so I'm throwing it in there. So it's easy. Mix it all up, crunch it all up. You can't forget this. You got this in jail right here? You lit. <laughs> you was lit. Put you some real hot water. Okay, so we don't really know how this one ends or what it tastes like or anything. So we're just going to be going off of Soldier Boy's hack here. So let's see how lit these people in prison are. First thing we're going to need is some ramen. The chicken ramen is the one that he used, so break. Maybe break it in the bag. I don't know how he just threw his and his didn't break. Now we need to add in some Chester fries. Throw some Lay's in there. And now we gotta break this all up. So this is what we're left with. It looks like a bunch of crumbs to me. I don't know how this is gonna transform into food, but we're not done yet. The next thing we need to add in is a bagged chunk of tuna. Doesn't look all that good, I'll tell you that. And don't forget to throw in your chicken flavor. And lastly, add in one cup of hot water. Tell me that looks exactly like his. Let that sit for a bit. Let it soak up so we don't got too much crunches in there. And then we'll try it. Doesn't look good, doesn't smell good, um, but hey, it's prison food. What do you expect, you know? Let's get in here, let's get a little bit of everything. Here's my bite. Ugh. Soldier boy, this one's for you. Here we go. It's not horrible. I can see how this could, you know, Relieve some stress when you're in prison, you know, it's, uh, I, I don't know what normal prison food is like, but this has got to be better. All you're really doing is flavoring the tuna. I think that's what this is about, is so that you're not eating plain fish in there with no sauce or anything like that. You gotta tell the people. I got no excuses on this one. Hmm. It's not the worst thing in the world. If I was home and I wanted to make it better, I'd add like some pepper. Yeah, we'd add a lot of things, but when you're in prison, you don't have those privileges to put good seasoning in your food. So for what it is, and for what we made out of just probably most likely commissary items, it's not bad. I'm gonna have to say, this one is a success. If you see yourself going to prison anytime soon, make sure you grab these ingredients. I'll help you out. The normal way of eating a banana, you know, you peel it and then you kind of just put it back there and you eat it, right? Well, turns out we've all been probably eating bananas wrong. Let's watch the clip. So someone told me that bananas are in three separate pieces and I didn't believe them, but then I pushed down the middle of one and look. I did not know this. We gotta figure this out for ourselves. Does this actually work? So here is your average banana. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary from it. Let's see if it can be separated into three bananas. Cause that's what I'm interested about. Peel it down. So all the guy did was kind of puncture it right here. Whoa, what's that feeling? What's that feeling? <gasps> what's, oh my God. Well, I'll be damned. This is actually three bananas. Because sometimes you eat one banana, you want a little bit more, right? And it's just too much to open a whole other one. Just split it into three. I mean, that's technically the same banana. Right! It's a life hack! This one, without a doubt in my mind, is a total success. I'm amazed. Now it's time for a healthy, delicious snack. Hopefully, if it turns out that way. Let's roll the clip. She don't want to waste no time. But she could have wasted my And baby I'm falling, falling, falling And you got me all in, all in, all in I mean, I'm no health coach or anything But that looks pretty healthy to me So, let's make it This is a store-bought potato Nothing special about it We're gonna throw it in the microwave For five minutes on each side Aren't you supposed to stab it? Oh, couple stabs 
I'm guessing this allows the heat to go in and out, cook the inside. I'm guessing here. I'm just a dude who tries live hacks. What do I know? A few moments later. All right, our potato is now officially done being cooked in the microwave. So the next thing we need to do is we need to chop this potato in half. So. But now you need to season your potato. So we got some paprika here. We're gonna throw that on top, nice little layer. Then we're gonna add some pepper. Then we're gonna add some salt. Then we're gonna add a little bit of garlic powder. Then we're gonna grab some cheese. This can be any kind of cheese that you like. I got Mexican blend because yo soy mexicano por vida hasta la muerte. Pick up the merch brand Taylor.com. Okay, here we go. Don't worry, we're gonna put some more cheese after. If you didn't know, I'm lactose intolerant, and that merch is selling out quick. Brandtaylor.com. Grab your tomatoes. Place them inside, crack them inside. More cheese, put it on the top. And then you wanna season it with one more round of all your seasonings. And now we are ready to throw it back in the oven for 20 minutes at 350 degrees. I can't wait to eat this. Look at that, perfect timing. Woo wee Oh my God, look at that. That looks pretty pretty freaking good. Next thing we're gonna need to do is throw on some sriracha. I honestly have never had sriracha before. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it looks great. It smells great. Let's see if 20 minutes was the exact right amount of time and let's see how much this egg is cooked. Let's, let's cut it in half. Oh, got a little bit of running. Oh, that actually probably would be pretty smacking if you ask me, so. Here we go. Oh my God. This smacks ridiculously hard for no reason. You were to throw in maybe some pieces of ham or maybe like some chopped up pieces of bacon in there. This would be a on the go meal. This is like a full course meal, on the go, easy, delicious. Oh my God. I'm gonna have to say it guys, this one is a total success. You need to try this at home. I'm gonna finish eating this, but I'll see you guys on the next one. Where are all my cheese lovers? Right here. Hey, I thought we were lactose intolerant. Yeah? Well, today we're gonna have to break that because we're making cheese donuts. Huh? Let's watch the clip. Okay, so this video is for Gordon Ramsay, so if you're not Gordon Ramsay, just keep scrolling. Anyways, I'm not going to me ahead. Um, I just wanted to let you know that some people are kind of saying low key that like I'm a better chef than you, and like obviously, like I, I know that that's you know true. So I just wanted to show you this recipe for. Wow. Okay, my little lactose stomach is pumping right now because of this. So we got to try this out because that's what we do on this channel. We please everyone. So what we have here is a giant, more cheese than I could ever use in my entire life. A giant stick of mozzarella cheese. This is a brick of mozzarella cheese. Let's cut this in half. Ah! In the microwave and let's melt this cheese up. So now we place these in the freezer, let them cool off for 30 minutes, and hopefully we'll be able to pull them out of here. And then the next step will come. Look at that. Wow. Get it all in there. The flour. Get it all in there. One more time. Takis. Let's see, will this work? If it doesn't work with Takis, I think it'll work better with Hot Cheetos because they just don't crush up enough. But let's see, here we go. Wait. Right off the bat, I can already tell by just looking at it, the Hot Cheeto one looks a lot better, but for the sake of it staying together, I'm gonna pull apart this other one since it's had more time to cool. Let's see if we got that same effect. Here we go, ready? And pull. Oh my God, I think we did it. All right, Jake, get on in here. He wanted to try this the most, so taste test, baby. Cheese edition. I think you, you totally lose the flavoring of the Takis. There's no more spiciness. It tastes like a classic mozzarella stick to me, but in just bigger form. That's too much cheese. It needs a sauce. It needs like a marinara. You dip it in there and it's over. That's yeah. exactly what I was the thinking. The crunch is really good though. Solid crunch. Like it definitely held its own inside of the, the maker. I thought yeah. it was gonna lose itself. But if you're comparing it to like a cheese stick from a pizza place with like garlics, I don't know. I don't know what's better. I like it. Pull it, let's pull this apart. Here we go. Let's go into the camera, ready? Oh 
my god. Alright, let's try it. I think the Takis was way superior. The crunch was better because Takis are always harder. The flavor's completely gone from the chip though. Yes, you don't taste the chip at all, so you yeah. can really use any kind of chips. You can probably even do it the normal way and yeah, use you breadcrumbs. Can. Go crazy with this, try out your own. But for this test, I'm gonna have to say for the cheese donut, this one is a success. Even though I'm lactose. <laughs> I'll feel it later. This is a toaster. And these are steaks. And we're gonna cook this steak inside of the toaster. Will that work? I don't know. Let's watch the clip. All right, she's straight up putting a T-bone steak in. Well, I'll be damned. That looks pretty dang good. A little crispy on the top. Oh, wow, that's a lot of sauce. Okay. Well, I think we can make this steak a little bit better because steaks are my specialty. So, before we do this, we gotta prepare the steak. She looked like she just threw the steak in there. She didn't even prepare it first. What is she thinking? Grab our steak out, we're gonna dry it off. So, I'm gonna throw on just some nice seasoning, some salt and pepper rub. Oh, and hey. And then rub it in, massage it in. Let's put it in there and let's see if it cooks. This might potentially ruin my whole toaster, but here we go. Okay. It's in there. Let's see if it cooks. Here we go. So the only thing that I can say that it looks different from my normal steaks is my steaks come out a lot more oily and buttery because I usually douse them in butter. This has no butter, no oil. We literally just cook the steak. We have some seasoning on it. Um, we're gonna let it sit for a little bit so the flavors can come back in and we gotta salt bay this. A little salt. Okay, let's check out our steak. Let's see what we're working with here. So I'm gonna cut it. Down the middle. Got actually cooked in a lot, a little bit more than I was hoping, but hey, color is a little, uh, is a little off. I think that's because it came from the toaster, because I, steak looks a little bit like, I know the steak's already dead, but it looks dead. It's a lot, but it's dead. Let's taste this. I ain't gonna hate on the steak. The steak is not bad. The steak tastes actually really good. And surprisingly, we cooked the whole damn thing in a toaster. I'll be damned. It cooked the inside, it cooked the outside. It is a little bit more rubbery, a little bit more chewy, but it could also be the, the choice of steak that Jay got us over here. That's not the issue. The issue is, is it tastes actually somewhat good. It cooked rather fast. There's really not much dishes besides trying to figure out how I'm gonna wash my toaster, but hey, that's besides the point. That's a good quality steak. And I didn't have to pour a, a gallon of A1 on it for it to taste good. I'm gonna have to say that this life hack is actually a success. Hey, if all you got is a hole in the wall to plug a socket and a toaster, you can make a steak. I wonder if it works with chicken. That wraps up this video, guys, and I really don't want you to miss out on these awesome Black Friday slash Cyber Monday deals. There's only two days left to get up to 50% off on all the merch, brennantaylor.com. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and always remember, take care of yourself. I love you guys so much, and I will see you later. Peace.